Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my single cell ATAC seq video tutorials. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to perform DNA sequence motif analysis. For today's demonstration, I will use the adult mouse brain data set. You can see from the SIGNEC online tutorial, there are two datasets for online demonstration, the PBMC dataset and the mouse brain dataset. I analyzed the mouse brain dataset already. If you want to practice with the mouse brain dataset for DNA sequence motive analysis, you can click the link and download the data from here and also you can see all the code for the online tutorials. So you can follow the online tutorial to create the mouse brain thread object. In my video tutorial 1 to 3, I showed you how to analyze the PBMC dataset. The processes of analyzing the mouse brain dataset are the same as the PBMC dataset. So for today's demonstration, we just need to read the mouse brain thread object into R and then start to perform the motive analysis. Let's go ahead and read the mouse brain thread object into R. So first, you need to know the order packages list here for this analysis. So we can read the mouse brain throughout object. So we have two assays, PIX and RNA in the object. So we can set the default assay as PIX. Then we can have a look at the cell clusters in this object. Let's zoom in. You can see we have the cell clusters for different uh, neuronal populations. We have oligodendrocyte, astrocyte, and the cluster of macrophages. So you can see our analyze the thread object. Now we can add the motive information into the thread object. First, we get a list of multiple position frequency metrics from the Jasper database. So let's go ahead and get the metrics set. So you can see here, in the position frequency metrics data frame, we got 746 motifs. So now we can add the motif information into the threat object. So we are going to use the find the markers function again to identify differentially accessible peaks between the power albumin positive neurons and the somastatin positive neurons. We only identify the positive peaks for the parameter of minimum percentage. The default setting for single cell RNA sequencing data analysis is 0 0.1. Because single cell ATAX data are sparse data, so here we use 0 0.05. So let's run the find the markers function. So you can see here, we identified more than 35,000 differentially accessible peaks. To narrow down our analysis, we get top differentially accessible peaks for the p-values more than 0 0.05. So now you can see, we only have 2727 peaks. 
Now we can identify the enriched DNA sequence motif within the 2727 peaks using the find the motif function. So let's run the find the motifs function. So you can see we have an enriched motif data frame for the 746 motif positions. If we have a look at the data frame, we can see how many times the motif can be observed within 2727 peaks. And the p-value for each motif and the motif names. So we have the data frame for the enriched motifs. So now we can use the motif plot function to visualize the motif sequence. If we zoom in, you can see the position weight matrix for the enriched motifs. So I showed you how to find the highly enriched motifs using differentially accessible peaks. Next, I'm going to show you how to perform differential motif analysis between different cell clusters. This analysis provides an alternative method to identify differentially active motifs between different cell clusters. First, we need to run the Chrome VAR function. This function calculates motif activity score for each cell and identifies motif associated with variability in chromatin accessibility between different cell clusters. The motif activity score allows to visualize the motif activities in each cell cluster using the feature plot function. So now our finished calculation of motif activity score for each cell. So let's set the default assay as Chroma VAR. Then we can use the feature plot function to see the motif activities in each cell. For example, here we are going to see the motif MEF2C activity in each cell. Let's run the feature plot function for the motif MEF2C. Then we can visualize the uh, cell clusters together with the motif activity for MEF2C. We can zoom in. You can see MEF2C has a high motif activity in these neuronal sub clusters. Okay, that's it for today's video tutorial. In summary, I showed you how to perform DNA sequence motif analysis in SIGNAC. I hope my video could help your data analysis. If you haven't subscribed my channel, please click the subscribe button after you watch my video. Thank you and hope to see you in my next video.